Hello guys and girls and welcome to a brand new series here on the Golf Monthly channel called The Travelling Golfer. I'm your host, my name's Rory. If any of you who do recognise me, you know that I'm an eight handicap golfer. I uh, spent years travelling the world, filming golf content and whacking it on YouTube. And I'm here on the Golf Monthly channel to pretty much do the same and show you guys some of the best destinations that you guys might want to consider for future golf holidays. To kick off the series, I'm off to Mallorca, 48 hours, two golf courses. Let's get going. Right guys, just got to Gatwick Airport. Uh, got a two hour, 20 minute flight time from here to Parma, capital city of Mallorca. Once I get there, got an hour's drive to the northeast corner of the island where the two golf courses that I'm playing this week are waiting for me. Two epic golf courses, so yeah, stay tuned. For 48 hours in Mallorca, golf, sun, maybe a couple of beers, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But yeah, 48 hours in Mallorca, here we come. Right guys, morning of day one of my Mallorca adventure and I'm at Pula Golf Resort. One of my favourite venues that I visited here in Mallorca. Basically, it's like a one-stop shop. Stay and play resort, you've got two different accommodation options. One here, and then some proper golf-centric apartments up there. Got the Sierra de Pula restaurant, just literally 20 yards away from where I am now. Fantastic restaurant, great pro shop. Trackman on the driving range, two-tier driving range here at Pula. Like everything you need for a golf holiday literally roll out of bed onto the first tee or onto the driving range and away you go. 18 hole golf course. I'm gonna set myself a target of breaking 80 today. We'll see, you know, it's a European tour venue. It's hosted multiple European tour events in the past. So we'll see how I get on. Obviously I play off eight. So, you know, breaking 80 is a ambitious slash realistic target depending on how I'm playing. I'm kind of quietly optimistic. Let's take to the golf course, show you what it's all about here at Pula, what you can expect if you head to Mallorca on your next golf holiday. You will have noticed I've gone baby blue, head to toe. Hope that's okay with some of you guys. I know, got beard, got man bun, and now head to toe in the same colour. Apologies if that offends anyone, but here we go. Stroke index 18, par four, downwind. Bunkers up the right, I'm not sure if I can fly them or not, but let's find out, I guess. Straight at them. Drifting right a touch, but it should be Fine, findable for sure. Could be nice. Oh, zip. Christ, that's gone, gone a little bit long. All right, guys, long and left of the first green here, or the fourth green, should I say, after skipping the first three holes. Um, Texas wedging. Don't really feel like chipping it off a bare lie. I am trying to practice my chipping at the moment after a few years of duffing it all over the world, but this is definitely a putt in my eyes. Sit down now. Go, go in. Oh, sit. Oh, there's a lot of emotion going on. <laughs> you can probably hear on the cam, it is quite windy today here in Mallorca. Obviously, I've looked at the forecast the last couple of days. It does look like it's gonna die down a bit. Look, it's start of March. In the UK, we're wearing Under Armour base layers, bobble hats thermal leggings if you're getting on a bit like I am and here in Mallorca I'm in a t-shirt it's lovely weather it's about 10 12 degrees uh, definitely take a pile on the first two points yep. so straight away here on the fifth hole at Pula you're faced with what this course is really all about. In the middle of the round here at Pula, you've got quite big, sizable water hazards. Like I said, it is a little bit windy today. So all up the right of this hole, you've got water. Into the wind today, so playing a little bit longer than it usually would. I'm gonna hit driver, which I think is pretty aggressive. 
considering the fairway just gets narrower and narrower and narrower the further up the hole you go. You know, if it was a still day, I wasn't just straight out of my hotel room onto the course. I'd flirt with the idea of hitting a two iron down there into the fat part of the fairway. But today, I'm gonna hit driver. I'm on holiday. I'm wearing baby blue head to toe, so I shouldn't be taking myself too seriously, should I? Ah, oh, it's an arrow. Just leaking right. Get down. I'm not gonna lie. Ah, I've rinsed one into the water. So, taking a bit of a drop. Got about 110-ish yards. Again, into the wind. Got a 50 degree wedge. What a disappointing start. Par on the first. Stupid club choice off the second, to be fair. See when I hit the green and drop two, play three. In for a five with two putts. Oh, it's at it if it's the club. Be up, be up. Yes, please, that is six feet or so. I've got a par putt, people, come on. Right, this would be very sneaky, getting out of here with a four. Great wedge shot, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> Not like me at all. Come on, left to righter for another par. Aye. Oh, I've hit that quite hard as well. Don't miss this now, Rawls. Thank God. That's exactly where I wanted to hit it. I think that's perfect. And he's fired it. Not gonna lie, fat at that. It's done quite well actually. <laughs> All right, for a four. Pretty uninspiring after the tee shot, which was in a great position to be fair. Go, go. Ah, I'll take it. Four, five, five to kick things off with. Not the end of the world. I nearly missed that. <laughs> ah, that's wet. Now, Pula opened for play in 1995, and it was just about a decade after that that the course went through an extensive remodeling phase. And it was none other than Jose Maria Alathabal who was overseeing that project. And anyone who's ever played a Alathabal course knows that the guy knows exactly what he's doing. Hardly surprising for a double Masters champion and Ryder Cup legend. But yeah, he oversaw the renovations here at Pula. And you can definitely see how from these back tees, if you look behind me there, the white tee is a good, I don't know, 60 yards further back than the yellow tee here today on the 12th. There really is championship golf on offer here at Pula. If you're the kind of low handicap golfer who likes to test yourself, this is definitely a course that will test your game, but with multiple tee positions, it is definitely a friendly or a more friendly proposition for handicap golfers who just want a bit more holiday golf vibe. Um, today on the 12th, we've got 127 yards, plays uphill, wind slightly off the right and a little bit against, I would say. So let's see what we can do here. I've not had the best of front nines, respectable in places and something to work on for tomorrow when I head to Al Canada, which is one of the favorite courses that I've played over the last few years. So yeah, enjoying my time so far here in Mallorca. Let's see if we can finish strong on the back nine, rack up a few more pars, starting with the par three 12. That is a toey hook, <laughs> but I reckon I'm putting. Right, as you can see, just about held on to the putting green, to be honest with you. Great result after a pretty bang average shot. And I'll show you in a second, but the step in this green is quite severe. So with the pin literally three or four yards up onto the top level, this is not an easy hole, despite only being 130 yards from the yellow tees today. Go, go, okay. As you can see, if you get this just slightly wrong, that 
is just going to go and go and go off the front edge of the screen. That's a naughty little pin, isn't it? Man, that's yeah, out to the right. Get out of that bunker. Right, this is kind of my nightmare considering how bad my chipping is. Ball off the down slope, green running away from me. I've got the 60 degree wedge out. Weight all on the left. Oh God, this is so difficult for me. I played that quite nicely though. Not understanding how it's not rolling right instead of left, but oh well, it's on the green. That could have been Duff City. Right, one final putt. Can I scramble a par? Can't believe that that chip has rolled down here, although now that I'm on this side of the hole, it is a little bit more obvious. See, that thing that tall pros do when they kind of look at it from all angles does make sense, but ain't nobody got time for that. If I can slot this one, I'll be happy with the way I've played on day one. Looking very much forward to trying a little bit harder to put a score together tomorrow. The golf course tomorrow is out of this world, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Not hit that hard enough. That's poor, to say the least. All right, tap in bogey. Oh well. Right guys and girls, there's a bit of a snapshot of what is on offer here at Pula Golf Resort in Mallorca. Make sure you stay tuned because tomorrow we've got an absolutely amazing course playing at Alconada Golf Club, host of the Challenge Tour Grand Final, three time host as of November this year. So if you are looking for a winter golf holiday later on in the year, definitely consider Mallorca because you can play a few rounds of golf here at Pula. You can go to the event at Alcanada. You can obviously then play that golf course the day after the event in tournament condition. There are some other courses in this corner of the island as well. So yeah, good first day at Mallorca. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen of Pula Golf Resort. If you have any questions about this place, make sure to pop in the comment section. But for now, I'm gonna head into the Pula Clubhouse, get changed, go for dinner in a banging restaurant, get up early tomorrow, hit the road for some more golf. adventure and I'm off to a place called Alcanada Golf Club. It's about an hour's drive, just less than an hour from where I'm staying here at Pula Golf Resort, still up in the northeast corner of the island. And this, I have to say, is one of my favourite golf courses that I've played over the last few years. So yeah, special one in store for today. arrived at Alcanada Golf Club and as you can see from the drive-in the location of this course is pretty spectacular we'll see more of the amazing views as we get to the high points around these mountains with some of the raised tees looking out over the bay of Alcudia looking pretty special uh, I have played this golf course before and I was last here I didn't play but I was watching the Challenge Tour Grand Final which has been hosted here at Alcanada twice is coming back in 2023 for a third visit so as you can see, when you come here, play off those back tees, championship golf is very much on the cards. And the winning score last year was only minus nine. And bearing in mind, these guys are obviously playing for their rights on the DP World Tour. So they're at the top end of the professional game, really, really amazing players. And only coming out with a winning score of minus nine shows you what the test of golf is like here at Alcanada from those back tees. Now, I'm not man enough to take on those white tees because it's over 7,000 yards from back there. I get my handicap at a 6,200 yard course. So I've edged forward onto the yellows which are still 6,600 yards and I've set myself a target of breaking 80. Now an educated guess, 
and say I'm probably not going to do it. But uh, anyway, let's crack on, play a bit of golf here at Alcanada. Like I said, an hour from where I'm staying at Pula and a really, really special course. Can I break 80? Jump in the comments down below, yes or no. It's up the right, it's well hit. It's fine, it's just over that bunker. Kicking down now, could be on the adjacent fairway once gravity gets involved, but considering I'm fresh out of the car with no time to warm up, I'll take that to start. Not really expecting to hit this all the way up to the green, but anything in play and over that trouble I'll be happy with. Straight at the bunker. Yeah, that is about five, six yards short of the green, exactly where I was aiming. Happy, happy with that start. Like that. Run. Ah, uh, not enough to get over that slope. Not the best, but given my history of the dust, I'm not overly disappointed with that. I just needed to fly it a little bit further or take a little less loft. Something to think about, obviously I didn't have a chance to warm up on the practice screen before I teed off, so a little bit of guesswork with how the green's going to react over the first couple of holes, but hopefully I'll get up to speed with them, for lack of a better pun. Apologies. <laughs> right, birdie put on the first. Go in, go in. Oh, I will take a two inch tap in par putt on the first hole without a warm up any day of the week. Level par through one. Yeah, actually a bit of a cut there, but that's absolutely fine. And hit the slope. And go a bit. And go a bit more. And go in. Oh, I think we can all agree that that is a gimme. So worth noting that Alcanada boasts this Tag Marshall buggy system, which is a really, really detailed GPS of the golf course. It tells you what your pace of play is like, what your start time was. I've been playing for 29 minutes through two holes. <laughs> uh, maybe need to speed up a little bit, but you can do all sorts of stuff with this. Give it a bit of uh, food and bevs action. Lovely. As you can see, map of the course, you know, don't get lost, all that kind of stuff. It's a great system. One of the fancier GPS units out there for sure. Bit skinny, low on the face, up the right. Not a good shot at all, but it's bouncing. Could even get a bit of cart path love and a few extra yards out of that one. So quick shout out to Alcanada actually. The course opened for play in October 2003. So we're creeping up on the 20th birthday of this magnificent golf course. Uh, we'll just see if I can find my ball, flick another little wedge shot into this par four green and hopefully start off with par, par, par. That would be lovely. I've taken the wrong club down here. I've got a 60 degree wedge. So I'm gonna have to throw this quite far, but I definitely can't be bothered to go back to the buggy. Hit it nice and sit. Definitely take that. No, that was low all day long. Now, to be honest with you, struggling for a bogey. <laughs> yeah, in for a five, one over through three, to be honest with you, without a warm up, take that for sure. Right, seventh tee, raised tee. Absolutely spectacular view in the background, as you can see, as this par five snakes its way down the hill in between bunkers and rows of trees. Brilliant, brilliant golf hole. I would argue this is the signature hole on this golf course. There are other candidates later on the round, which I'm sure you'll see on this video. But yeah, if I can get a good drive away over this bunker, chasing down the hill, even though it's a 600 yard par five from this yellow tee, I reckon I can get pretty close in two. So bombs away, as they say, and uh, let's see if we can sneak one down there in the fairway. Bit necky, definitely not my best strike. Up the left, it's absolutely fine. It's at that kind of big tree right in the middle of the two bunkers, but as you can see, 
I've been so close to going down this slope and getting a few extra yards. That would have been lovely, but as it stands, I've got about 320 yards left in. <laughs> so there are two bunkers down there. One right, one left, which I do think make this layup a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So I am kind of tempted to hit three wood and just try and get it as close to the green as possible over these bunkers and in play with a wedge. Unfortunately though, three wood off the deck is not really my strong suit. So I'm gonna be a wimp, I'm sorry. I'm gonna play this hole as a three shotter, which let's be honest, unless I absolutely ripped one down the right hand side here and chased down the hill, it was always gonna be anyway. I'm just gonna hit a six iron, which I don't think is enough to reach the bunker on the right. If I go in that direction, should leave about a wedge in. That is straight out the bunker, so if it does reach it, I'm an absolute plonker. Uh, yep, comfortably right in the middle of that bunker. Right, so 9 iron, 136. Try and catch it a little bit clean. Like that. That's the yardage, that's such a good shot. Get down, get down, get down. Straight over the top of the pin, I think I have hit that a little bit too hard. Probably got like a 35 footer for a birdie. I'll take it though. Come on. Par required to break 80. Oh, it hit a bit bottomy, but that's so sh straight and safe. Oh, that's fairway, I think. Rubbish for distance, but accuracy wise, lovely. Stay there and be the yardage. Stay there. Just not quite reached the green, but I think it's literally like a yard short, should be putting that. Now I know I said I quite fancy practicing my chipping at the moment, but, and this would be a good opportunity to practice that strike off the tight fairway lie. But let's be honest, I need to get this down in two for a 79. So I'm running back to the putter. Off the left, quite a few left to right putts today, all on the pace. and swing, and go, and that's a tapping. 79, nothing to write home about for decent golfers, but for me, eight handicapper, seven over, broken handicap, break 80, done. There we have it guys, all done at Alcanada, all done in Mallorca, I'm sad to say. That was my 48 hours on this amazing island, playing two really cool golf courses. Really enjoyed my stay at Pula, as always, fantastic all-encompassing resort, Trackman driving range, superb restaurant, great place to have a few drinks in the evening, really relaxed kind of vibe, friendly people, and obviously the two different accommodation options on site, making it a super convenient place to stay and play in Mallorca. And then you've got this place, Alcanada Golf Club, an hour's drive, well, just less than an hour from Pula. So if you're looking at maybe like three nights, five nights kind of holiday stay and play package, definitely recommend Pula as a good base. There are accommodation options near Alcanada, but as a standalone golf club, they don't have their own hotel as of yet. So this is definitely a kind of tack it onto the itinerary kind of vibe option, and I certainly would recommend it. One of my favorite courses that I've played over the last few years, and I'm lucky to say that I've ticked off a fair few all the way around the world, and this is definitely one of the most spectacular places to play, as you can see behind me. And as I said at the start of the video, super friendly, really great clubhouse to have a spot of lunch after your round. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time for all that. 
I've got to shoot back to Palmer Airport now and back to the UK. Back to base layers and jumpers and bubble hats and... Can I just stay in Mallorca? <laughs> <laughs>